Advanced Financial Modeling, Topic 11, Cost of Capital and Real Options, Learning Objective Number 7. We're going to value real options and capital budgeting. So let's talk about the concept of real options. Well, financial options, namely calls and puts, those options grant the right but not obligation to buy or sell an asset. Buy for a call option, sell for a put option. So what is a real option? A real option in business includes the right but not obligation to invest in a project, to expand a project, to defer a project, or abandon a project. So these options are not appropriately valued using traditional NPV analysis and capital budgeting. So NPV fails to capture the value of these real options. So let's look at an example. Say if you build a small production facility today, and that small production facility, it gives you the initial expertise and knowledge to later expand the business, but only if the conditions are right. So let's look at a, that example with some numbers. So I'm going to go to the spreadsheet. So we have a phase one of a small production facility. It's going to cost you $140 today and generate cash flows of these in the future. And then it has a perpetual growth rate of 5.5%. So I have these free cash flows for the year six, zero through six. I then have a growth perpetuity from seven through infinity. So in present value terms, that's or in six year value terms, it's 178. These are the total cash flows. I calculate an NPV at 13%. The NPV is zero, I'm sorry, is negative. Therefore, I should reject it. There's also a phase two of the project. In year three, you have an option to expand the project by spending another 350, and these are the cash flows if you build this secondary larger facility based on the knowledge gained in the first one. And you just have in, in year three, you pay 350, and then you get 20, 25, 28. That grows at 5.5% forever. Uh, the perpetuity value is there, and you have a negative NPV of for negative, negative $14. Notice on the NPV, I didn't start at year three. I have the zero in year one, zero in year two, then three, four, five, six, and then I add the initial investment today of zero. So this definitely says don't do the project. The combined NPV is negative 24. However, what if you have a real option to abandon I'm sorry, real option to expand in that second facility. In other words, this is an option. You don't have to do phase two. And you would only do phase two if you learned enough in phase one and the market conditions and sales and your know, competitive situation were such that you knew that in this second phase, it was going to be successful. So you have this option to do the second phase, but not an obligation. So how do I value that? I have the right to walk away from the second phase. So here's how I'm gonna value that. I'm gonna value that second option to expand the business as a call option. It's an option to buy another facility at $350. So I'm gonna value it using BS call. That's my call function in Excel and my VBA program. This call option is the right to buy a facility for $350. That's my strike price. What's the value of that facility? Well, it's the present value of these cash flows. The present value of these cash flows right here, this 20, 25, 28, and 393. So I took the present value of those cash flows, discount it back to today. That is 228. So I have the right to buy this facility at 350. Its value is 228. That doesn't sound like a good deal, but you have this option for three years. You have three years to make the decision and you can walk away. Here's the key. The, the volatility of this value is, uh, I just made an assumption, is 40%. That's kind of like the normal volatility of an individual stock is 30, 40%. So the, the value, the volatility of this is 40%. The risk-free rate through uh, th uh, three year, I assume is five and a half percent. And I use BS call and I get a $41 value. So it's, the, it's the, the option's worth $41. Now let's play with this and see what it means. What if the volatility of the uh, value of the cash flows were say 
then this option has no value. Why? Because you're buying it for 350. If it's going to be almost definitely two, worth 228, you know it's not worth it. But at 40% vol, it's worth it. At 80% vol, it's worth $100. So the idea is the more volatile this asset is, the more valuable the option is, this turns capital budgeting and our understanding of finance on its head a little bit. Meaning that the most valuable, and, and when you have an option to make an investment, you want volatility because you can just walk away if conditions are unfavorable. You just need to know there's just a high volatility that this thing could be more valuable. So how would I calculate the NPV of this? Well, I can add the 41 option value to the combined NPV. Now I have an NPV of $17. I should definitely build the first facility. This makes a lot of sense in you think of a strategic decision. Well, let, let's, let's, let's put our toe into this business, see how it goes, and then we'll, we'll wind up to deciding whether to do a big investment. All right, so this is using Black Shoals to value a call option to expand a business or enter a new business. Now let's look at a business uh, in which we, a, a small business, it's a food truck. So I'll go back to the PowerPoint to look at the words. So Shady Food Trucks is considering an investment in a new food truck concept that would cost $100,000 today. And the investment would have a finite life of two years just to make things simple. So you buy a food truck that lasts for two years. They expect the profits of $55,000 for year one and year two, and the cost of capital is 8%. That's my whack. My base NPV is losing $2,000. So let's look at that base NPV. I spend $100. I get 55 and 55. My whack is 8%. My NPV of cash flows is losing $2. My NPV is negative $2. However, if the food truck is not successful in the first year, say the profit is less than $50, they could sell the truck for say $50,000, half what they paid for it and just walk away. So you're gaining information. You're realizing if this is the right location, if this is the right concept, do you build a brand? And after, after the first year, if you don't make at least $50, you just walk away and sell the truck for 50. So that's one kind of option. Another kind of option is what if after the first year, they're killing it. They're, they have more than $50 of sales. Then you maybe add a second shift or add maybe two more people to the food truck and double your operating profits. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at these two options separately and see if we should get this truck. So back to the spreadsheet. Now I'm gonna use a, use a simulation. So this is a real option simulation of, sh of shady food trucks. Um, so you wanna to go to the tab, it's the real sim shady. Okay, the real option simulation of shady. And the first thing I wanna show you is I did a simulation of the base case to show you that it's, I can use a simulation to get the two, the minus two NPV. So here's my simulation. What if the volatility of free cash flows is 50% per year? Again, I expect 55. The next year is whatever the prior years is, is the expected, and it also has a 50% volatility. How could I simulate this? Well, I could just say 50, the, the, the profits or the cash flows in year two are 55 times one plus the 50% times the normal, uh, you know, that, that random Z. So these become a random cash flow. However, look at my cash flow in year two. You would think there's a relationship between one and year one and year two cash flows. So my year two cash flows are whatever happens in year one plus one plus the random Z again times the volatility. So notice if the first one turns out to be, and this, in this case, I just have random number in here. Yeah, the first one iteration of the 10,000, actually, I think I did, uh, yeah, I did 10,000. The first one turns out to be 70. The second one's more likely to be high because it's 70 times one plus that number. If the first one turns out to be low, say eight, then it's eight times one plus the random Z times vol. So that's why this one's so low. So this is my simulation for year one. My simulation for year two is based on what happens in year one. And then here's my NPV. 
It's the present value of both cash flows minus my $100 investment. And notice when I take the average of those simulations, I get minus two. And this, I've mentioned this earlier, if you choose symmetric distributions and normal distributions are symmetric, you will get the simulation mean NPV be the same as just doing it using my base case analysis. But this allows me, this analysis, this simulation allows me to uh, value that option to abandon. So again, the option to abandon. What, after, what if after the first year sales are below 50, but you know you could sell your truck for 50? That cost you 100,000. Well, let's wait around to see what happens next year. That's the random number from the first simulation. So I could just replicate it. But if the times are good, you don't abandon. And this is the same thing. But what if you have a bad outcome? Notice the fourth, for me, the fifth iteration here is a really bad outcome. I have a formula here. The first one is whatever happens. Whatever the first year, whatever happens. You don't know is going to happen. The second year, notice the formula for the second year. If the first year is less than 50, the value is 50. Sell the food truck for $50. So if it's less than 50, you get 50 and you sell the food truck and it's over. However, if it's greater than 50, you get the random number based on what happened the first year. So notice whenever I have a good year, say 70, I'm more likely to get a, 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 a good year again. But anytime I wind up below 50 in the first year, I just sell the truck and get 50. So I now get rid of all these bad outcomes. Look at all these bad outcomes. Five, minus five, 28. Now the worst case is the second year, I abandon the project, sell the truck for 50, and I'm done. So when I run 10,000 iterations of this and take the present value and the average of all the net present values, I get six. So it's worth it as long as there's volatility. Notice if I change these volatilities to say 1% and 1%, I get the same, almost the same valuation. But if I change these both to say 90%, this is even more valuable so volatility creates value if you have the option in this case to walk away. I'll change those back to 50 again, 50%. And then I have valued the option to expand. This is the same random number in the first year, but here's a new formula. If the first year is greater than 50, higher, double your staff and double your profits. So if the first year is greater than 50, double your profits. Otherwise, just keep the same uh, uh, level of uh, staff. So what you see is when you have a really good year, you double up on your staff and you have a really great year. Otherwise, you just uh, keep the same staff and you get the same value as before. That's really valuable. Look at that. The NPV now is 35. You know, let's take taking the NPV of both years. Now, the last thing is I put both options in, and it's all in this formula. If sales in the first year are greater than 50, double the staff. Otherwise, sell the truck for $50. So now I both have the option to expand by doubling the staff, and I have the option to walk away and get 50. Now it's a no-brainer that I should, the NPV of this project is 43. And you can see the option value is the difference between that 43 and my base case of two. So this is a really powerful concept of real options. It allows you to build in optionality into your uh, cash flows. It allows you to think about that managers have discretion in this process. So last slide, real option analysis allows you to incorporate uh, and value learning, management learning in that first year in our examples, management discretion to say double the, uh, you know, to, to launch the, the bigger facility, to double the size of the staff and optionality and decision-making. We can think about the condo as having optionality we can think about the, con the condo as a 10-year investment, but you can also think of it as an option. You have a real option to sell the condo if things don't turn out. 
So if you're getting the condo at a pretty good discount, you know, that's 605,000, you think it might've been worth seven or eight. Uh, after the first year, if the revenues aren't as good as you thought, maybe you can sell the condo uh, and, and walk away. So you don't have to sit through the next nine years of bad cash flows. Now, real options uh, in practice are, are difficult to, to, to value because uh, mostly the assumptions and the big assumption is what is the volatility of the cash flow? I'd say uh, kind of a, you think about the volatility, the S&P 500 is about 20%. I, I find the volatility of individual stocks tend to be about 30, 40, 50%. So I, I tend to see those, those numbers in real options, but that's really hard to come up with those values. However, it's at least worth considering real option values before rejecting projects with optionality. Or at a very minimum, if it's very close to a break-even NPV, what you could do is say, well, the, the, the value of the option, that, that's going to push the NPV in the positive. I don't know exactly how to value it. Uh, I'll play around and put a couple volatility assumptions in, uh, but, but show that it, it just, just a little bit of volatility, this project is good. And what we find is many strategic decisions involve option, optionality and management discretion. So this is a really important concept to put in your toolbox before you start rejecting projects because managers have discretions, projects have optionality.